Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, there's so many things going on across the country and uh, crops are at different stages depending on where you're at. When we're talking about wheat, we've got some areas of the country that are either at heading or very near heading. And we're going to talk about some of the things you can still do even that late in the season to influence your wheat crop. Well, when you talk about late in the season, Darren, I think I'm wearing three layers today. It's really cold where we farm in South Dakota, and that's one of the reasons why pastures have been set back compared to normal. So I've talked to a lot of farmers who are a little frustrated by that, especially coming off of last year when everything was way early, turned the cattle out early, and this year it's so late. What can you do to make your grass grow a little faster? What can you do to get more total tonnage of grass out there. We're going to talk about those things as well as some weed control options in pastures today. Well, speaking about weeds, Brian, we have a weed of the week that's a fun one to try and control depending on which crop you're in. We'll talk about that on today's show. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to discuss soybean flowering. So if you're a non-farmer, probably wondering, well, what's the difference? Don't all plants flower? Well, they do, or at least a lot of them do but they flower depending on different things. And with soybeans, it's a little bit unique. Well, soybeans in our part of the country flower based on the shortening of day length. So when you think about it, the days get longer up until June 21st, and then the days start getting shorter just by a few minutes each day. Now for my kids, they don't really seem to notice that. You know, it seems like, oh man, the days are long and they're really long until summer's just about over for the kids. But for soybean plants, they pick up on that, that it's just a few minutes less sunlight each day. And wow, I better start kicking it in gear because before we know it, frost is gonna come and we have to make soybeans first. So as farmers, we discuss this as the reproduction reproductive stages of soybeans. The reproductive stages start when that soybean plant starts flowering. So we always say, at least in our part of the country with the indeterminate soybeans that we raise, that when the day length begins to shorten, that's when reproduction is going to kick in. So you won't see it exactly on June 22nd or anything, but just a few days after that, you're going to see soybeans start to flowering and all those reproductive stages start to kick in. Well, and it's really interesting on a year like this year, we had a really tough time getting soybeans in on our farm. We had a lot of rain come right at the end of corn planting and frankly, corn planting was pretty late for us too because of all the snow that we had all the way into early May which is quite unusual even in our area but when soybeans get planted late a lot of farmers are nervous about it too of wow I hope I have enough time before there's a frost in the fall and the good thing with indeterminate soybeans is they have this trigger that even though they didn't get planted until early June in many cases they're still going to make it they're still going to flower around the 4th of July or so you know it takes a little bit of time for that trigger to kick in and get those flowers started but if they start flowering about that time, they will make seed that will be ready to harvest by harvest time. Now the challenge with soybeans is going to be how big will the vegetative growth get before they start putting all this energy into flower. Yeah, but the whole thing is with these indeterminate soybeans, they can have more vegetative growth and this flowering or reproductive stages going on both at the same time. So you might have really short soybeans out there flowering, well they can grow and still get pretty tall in the end. However, in the southern United States where they're raising determinate soybeans, all the vegetative growth occurs first, then the flowering and reproductive stages go. So different types of soybeans for different areas of the country. Well, soybeans are certainly an interesting crop. Even when they're planted a little bit late, they can still adapt. They start their reproductive stages by the shortening of days. I wish the same could be said about our weed brand that, you know, it's got a late start. We can hammer it before it gets into those reproductive stages. We'll show you how to control this week's weed coming up later in the show. What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready to Extend Soybeans, an advanced soybean product with tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate. Roundup Ready to Extend Soybeans. Extend your control. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech Electric System from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing roll tube to rise and flex over heap loads. Gears feature a positive automatic lock that is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This completely integrated system uses the same wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech electric conversion system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. 
For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. There are more mouths to feed than ever before. What are farmers doing to meet the challenge? They're using agronomically designed equipment from Case IH. Our Quattrac technology, soil management, and planting systems are designed to foster a better growing environment that helps farmers maximize yield potential. And our deep understanding of agriculture is preparing them for the challenges ahead. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Go to CaseIH.com to learn more. You expect a lot from this seed, and as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, AgroLiquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. From one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear. For better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. A proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burn down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. What can you do late in the season on wheat to still increase yield? Well, Brian, wheat is one of my favorite crops, and the reason why, you know, a lot of things have been bred into the corn and bred into the soybeans, and you know what? Some of the extra management things that we do, we don't get quite the return that we do when we do those things in wheat. Wheat is just a great crop for you influencing how it grows, how it protects itself, all these things. Yep. There are so many things you can get a great return on your investment on doing in wheat. Okay, so the first thing I look at when we're getting close to heading time is I'm concerned about disease because we've had too many years where we've had fusarium head blight or scab and then also rust especially now here in the last couple of years when stripe rust has moved into the northern United States. That's a big deal. Stripe rust is much more damaging than common rust. We have some options here. Back a few years ago, we only had one. That option was Folicure and it cost 15 bucks an acre and it wasn't that great on head scab. Well, now there's generic Folicure called Aureus that only costs $2 an acre for the full rate, so that's a great option if you don't want to invest a lot of money. However, there are the better options for head scab, and they're going to be probably just as good as the Aureus on rust. Those options are Caramba and Presaro. They're going to cost a little bit more money, maybe $10, $12, $15 dollars an acre, something like that. But like I say, if they're better on head scab and you're in an area that has that worry, then it's probably worth the money. Now here's where a lot of misinformation has been put out there, Brian. When we think about head scab prevention, a lot of guys are saying, well, you know, if I spray at flag leaf, that's yeah. going to carry over. I'm going to have some residual there and it's going to protect that head when it comes out. That's absolutely not true. When we're talking about all of these fungicides, they move in the xylem of the plant. The xylem only moves upward in the plant. It doesn't move down. So that's the reason why you want to get good spray coverage on the lower leaves of the plant. But even with the fungicides moving in the xylem, they don't generally move from leaf to leaf and they're not going to move into the head very likely. So what you need to do with these head scab treatments is spray at heading when the head is fully emerged and when you've got maybe 10, 20, 30 percent flowering, something like that. That would be the ideal timing from what studies have shown. So you've got to have that plant material out and exposed for you to be able to get the fungicide right. on there and actually protect it from the head scab. Now, when guys are saying, well, man, I had some stripe rust start to show up and I've got a flag leaf out, you've got to protect that flag leaf. You may have to spray twice. Now, I hope you don't, but you may have to. You've got to protect the flag leaf because it is so big a factor in determining what your yield is ultimately going to be. That flag leaf is the biggest generator of photosynthesis that's going to feed that head on your wheat plant. So you've got to protect the flag leaf. Now, hopefully you can make it till that head comes out and starts flowering before you need to spray, but just in case, you may have to have sprayed twice. Okay, and the other thing is, you're going to need to spray before you see disease. So like Darren just said, if you're starting to see disease, I'd forget all about that. I'd just automatically spray at flag leaf, I'd automatically spray at heading if you're going for top yields. Now if your yield goal is 30, I mean, that's fine. 
but that's that's a little different deal. But if we're talking, we want to get 75, 100, 125 bushel wheat, wheat is worth a lot of money. Why not invest a few dollars? It does not cost a whole lot and chances are you're going to get a good return, but this is something we want you to just at least try out on your farm. Another thing you might consider is spraying an insecticide. You got to be a little bit cautious with the pre-harvest intervals, 21, 28 days, depending on the insecticide you use, but insecticide is dirt cheap now, two to $4 an acre for the full rate. Just scout your fields. If you got bugs when you're spraying, throw some insecticide in. If you don't, great. Well, and here's another thing too, Brian. When we think about the disease and we think about the insects, a lot of people think, well, that's two different issues, but it can be really the same thing. If you've got bugs out there that are chewing on leaves and opening wounds up on the plant, that's the first place disease is going to get into. It's a plant that's not very healthy to begin with. It's got all these wounds on it. Okay, the next thing that I would take a look at is fertility. Now, this isn't necessarily going to increase yield, but it will likely increase protein. The two main nutrients really late in the season around heading timing that have a big impact. One, you think about a lot, that's nitrogen. The other, you probably, you may not have ever, ever even heard of this in wheat, and that's boron. But boron has a lot of impact in many different crops, especially around flowering time. So make sure you have good levels of boron. As far as the nitrogen thing, there are many steps you can take to make your nitrogen availability late in the season better. Well, you can certainly apply a nitrogen product late in the season. Maybe you've done everything right all through the year and you say, you know, I just need a little extra kick right at the end. Now that can work just fine. Like for us, we'll use something like end response. We'll use a couple of gallons per acre. You could put it on right at the same time that you're spraying that fungicide late in the season. You want to check with tank mix compatibility, of course, anytime you're mixing things, but it could be done all in that same application. Yeah, now, now I'm going to hold you up right there because when you start talking about putting fertilizer together with fungicide, you're likely going to get more leaf burn, and I would just as soon avoid that. I'd just as soon go on two separate trips, but here again, maybe you want to at least try that. When you're putting liquid nitrogen together with almost anything, you have to worry, but when it's with fungicides, I think you need to worry a little bit more. Well, and here's the other thing too. What some guys will do is use a little bit more water in that application to try and dilute that nitrogen yep. down. That lessens the impact a little bit of any potential leaf burn that you could see. So maybe instead of 10 gallons of water, maybe you use 15 or something like that, just to make it a little bit more tolerable for the crop. Okay, in terms of other steps you can take with that nitrogen, earlier in the year, you can use a nitrogen product that has a nitrogen stabilizer. You can use an encapsulator encapsulated or slow release, controlled release nitrogen, that kind of thing. You can also work on building your organic matter over a period of years, because if you have more organic matter, you'll have more free and natural release of protein late in the season. But all I can tell you is you have to have more nitrogen available late in the season if you want higher protein levels in your wheat. It's that simple. So fertility, insect control, disease control, those things are all pretty common, Brian. Yep. But what about plant growth regulators. What about <laughs> plant growth hormones? hormones? Yeah, I know. So this is one of the things as Darren and I have traveled around the world, gone to see some really good farmers, and we find these guys using plant growth hormones and biological products, things that, quite honestly, we'd never even heard of in some cases, and they're doing this, this with success. In the United States, typically it had always been specialty crop growers who were using these types of products because they had so many more dollars at stake than we do. But I mean, let's face it, if you can raise even 75 bushel wheat at the price we're at today, I mean, it's almost like dollaring out like a specialty crop. So what I'm trying to say is at least experiment a little bit with some of these plant growth hormones. One that we've used on our farm with some success has been Happy Grow. But I mean, there are many others. We encourage you just to take a look at that whole category of plant growth hormones and biological products. There are a lot of new things coming in the market and we at least want you to experiment with some of these things because there's a lot of yield potential to be gained and a lot of extra net profit dollars to be had. Well, you're right. There are a lot of different things you can do in wheat, even late in the season, to protect and improve your wheat crop. Well, one other thing that you'll certainly need to do to have a good crop, no matter what you're raising, is controlling our Wheat of the Week. Can you identify this week's wheat? Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature and it's clear to see why Capello is ahead above the rest. Today's number is three. You can see it everywhere and it can stand for almost anything. But when it comes to protecting the nitrogen that feeds your crops, three is the special number that sets Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager apart. 
because Nutrisphere N has proven to reduce all three forms of nitrogen loss, which adds up to keeping more nitrogen and yield where it belongs. So ask for Nutrisphere N, the stabilizer that fights nitrogen loss three ways. Today's Case IH equipment is packed with industry-leading technology, and Titan Machinery has the experts to make it perform to its maximum potential. We have a team of specialists and the entire Titan Machinery Network to provide you with the expertise to keep up with today's advanced machines. Whether it be for your Case IH planners, sprayers, or precision farming equipment, our experts have the answers to get the most out of your equipment investment. Maximize your productivity with Titan Machinery. Better solutions. Your equipment's ready. The seed's in the barn. You have a strategy to overcome the challenges you'll face and your crop protection products are pretty well locked in. But maybe you still haven't finalized your fertilizer plans. If not, visit agroliquid.com today. With products formulated for superior nutrient uptake, unsurpassed application flexibility, and proven by years of extensive research, this may be the season to take your yields to the next level using agriculture liquid fertilizer. Well, Darren, it's time to talk about pastures. And before we got going today, Darren just said, isn't it awfully late to be talking about pastures? But here's the thing, everything got delayed this year. So a lot of guys even right now are still wrapping up planting soybeans in the, the Northern United States. And the way it works for most crop farmers is we get the crop in, we take care of the crop, and then, oh yeah, we gotta do something about the pastures. And I think maybe we've got that a little bit mixed up. We need to invest a little more time and energy into those pastures. We can produce a lot more grass. Well, here's the thing, Brian, you know, right away early in the season you've got an opportunity and we talked in the wheat just a little bit about these plant growth hormones or plant growth regulators there's a very good one that can be used in grassland it's called rise up smart grass yeah we've tried that rise up on our own farm a couple different times and where it really fits where we've identified this is real early in the spring or late in the fall basically you can get an extra month of growth in the spring or at least a couple weeks of growth in the spring extra two to four weeks in the fall it's not the type of product you want to go use in the middle of the summer or anything like that. No, You've got to do it when it's cold. It's mostly effective when it's 40 to 60 degrees at increasing plant growth. Yeah, once everything is good and you're 80 degrees every day, well, then it's not going to make much difference because naturally the plant really has ramped up all those levels of hormones itself. So you don't have to worry about that. But early in the season, you can get started in that pasture early. You can extend your grazing window just a little bit longer. And really, this can be used in crop ground too. We are seeing a benefit in corn and other crops. So it's kind of an exciting thing. The other cool thing, Brian, is it can be used whether you're an organic producer or not. Yep. That's kind of a neat thing too for guys that say, well, you know, I'm really concerned about I want to have grass-fed beef and I don't want any hormones or anything like that. This is totally different. We're talking about plants here and this is approved, I believe, for most organic situations. Okay, but here's the problem, Darren. If you're going to have an extra couple weeks of growth in the spring, extra couple weeks in the fall, you're going to have to have a little bit more fertility. And this is what we always encourage you to do, soil test, plant tissue test, and you say, well, I'm not going to do that for my pasture ground, but why not? You do it for your crop ground, why not do it for your pasture ground? If your pH is out of whack, if you're missing one key nutrient, something like that, you could have a lot more good growth out there it doesn't cost much money. Just take a few soil samples, pull a few plant tissue samples as you go throughout the year and see what your crop really needs. Well, I like this. You know, some guys will say, well, grandpa never fertilized the pasture and dad never fertilized the pasture. I said, wow, you really better fertilize that pasture then because it's probably <laughs> depleted. When you think about it, you've got animals out there that are feeding off this and they're taking a lot of that away. Well, maybe. <laughs> if they're staying out there, then the manure is back out there and that's fine. But still, you might be short on one thing. So I see a lot of guys just throwing 
nitrogen out. And don't get me wrong, that's very important, but all we're saying is at least do some soil testing and tissue testing, invest $100 or $200, and find out, hey, maybe I do need one other thing, and I could have a lot more grass production. I just kind of equate it to your lawn, too. You look and you can see, uh, you know, some lawns that never get any fertilizer really don't look very good. And then you've got a lawn right next to it, you know, maybe it's the next neighbor over in town, and their lawn looks great because they're putting on plenty of fertilizer. I mean, you can see big differences in pastures, too, when you're driving down a gravel road and on one side there's a pasture that doesn't look very good and on the other side there's been some management done to it. One of those things may be fertility that's making more grass growth out there. They can have more animals per acre which is a big deal too. Well there's another thing you may not have thought much about for pastures and that is bug control. And I'm not saying we usually have all kinds of bugs out there that are causing a big problem but you got two main issues. Number one they're going to feed on the grass. Number two they're going to cause problems for your livestock. Seven and malathion, things like that. Just check the label, make sure it's labeled in your area, but consider an insecticide if you're seeing some bugs Well, out and there. here's the other thing too, it's not just a, a great big pasture, it may be your ditches around your fields. Well, that's we, a little bit different. If you're not gonna graze them, then there are other insecticide options. For yes. You. Okay, the last thing and what many farmers do focus on with pastures is weed control. So we really have three main weed control options. That's Tordon, Milestone, and 2,4-D. I love the Tordon because it's got the most broad spectrum and the longest residual. So as long as you're not gonna tear up your pasture and put it into crop ground anytime in the next five or 10 years, Tordon's probably a pretty good choice. Well, pasture management is important, especially since there are a few less acres of pasture, it seems like just about every year for a variety of different reasons. And one of the issues that you might find out in your pasture too is our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. You work to protect your farm's legacy and to keep it going. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System, an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Our Weed of the Week is Pennsylvania Smartweed. It's a tough annual weed. The thing that I don't like about it is it's got kind of waxy leaves. It's hard to stick herbicide on there. So it's kind of a tougher one to kill in well, some there, cases. Well, there are several different types of Smartweed. When you think about swamp, Smartweed is a perennial. It's kind of hairy. So it does look a little different than those smooth, waxy leaves of Pennsylvania Smartweed. Then, of course, you've got Ladies Thumb Smartweed, where it has kind of a dark imprint that looks about like a thumbprint on the leaf. So you get all these different Smartweeds out there. We're talking yeah. about Pennsylvania. One thing about Pennsylvania that you'll notice too. It has an ochria down at the base, right, where those petioles hook up to the stem. You'll see a membranous wrap kind of around the stem. They call that an ochria. So there's kind of some interesting things about Pennsylvania, but it is an annual weed, so we can control it with a lot of different options. Okay, so let's start in corn. What are your best options in corn? Well, in corn, if you're doing a burn down, I really like Verdict. Balance Flex also works good in a burn down. As far as long-term residual control, I like Balance Flex the best. Okay, post-emerge? Well, post-emerge status is by far the best on Pennsylvania Smart weed. This is one of those weeds, if you've got that as your predominant weed, choose status, it's better than the others. Hornet's not too bad. Now some guys will say, well I'm going to use my Hornet as triple flex sure start, then come back with status, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about in soybeans? Well, in, in soybeans, I really like Authority MTZ, and the reason why, the Authority portion is pretty good on it, but the MTZ is Metribuzin, and that also has some impact on the smart wheat. So you got two different modes of action, that's good pre, but what are you gonna do post if Roundup doesn't get it? Now, Roundup still is getting it in most cases, especially if you go higher rates, but let's say your Roundup didn't work. Okay, well, post-emerge, if it's cold like today, you aren't gonna like my best option. My best option is actually old Bassagran. It works really well when it's hot and humid. We typically say you need at least 150 points between temperature and humidity. So if it's an 80 degree day, you need at least 70% humidity for that Bassagran to work its best. Okay, and finally in wheat, real quickly, pre and Well, in and wheat, most. pre we like Sharpen. That's by far the best if you can burn some down and get a little bit of residual. And then post-emerge, I like Husky, but I may bump that rate up towards the higher end of the label. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week Pennsylvania Smart Weed, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. 
Visit CaseIH.com to be ready. We'll solve one mysterious tank contamination issue on today's Iron Talk. Now, if you didn't rinse out your spray tank and you switched from corn to soybeans and you dinged the beans with some contamination in the tank that you didn't even try to get out, it wouldn't be much of a surprise. But when you actually double or triple rinse the tank out and use tank cleaner and the whole works, it simply makes you angry if it didn't work 100%. However, there's more to cleaning out a tank than just getting the gunk off the sides. One thing we're running into this year, especially with the frequent showers that hit much of the upper Midwest through the month of May, is when product is left in a poly spray tank overnight. Sure, no one wants to get rained out and have to come back to finish spraying the field the next day or a couple days later. The problem is, if you have a herbicide sitting in the tank for an extended period of time, products like Roundup can actually have the time to act like a very good tank cleaner. You see, poly tanks actually have pore space within the poly. Your normal tank cleanout procedures may not be doing an adequate job of pulling past chemicals you've used out of those pores. The solution is twofold. Number one, after your initial flush out is done, then use tank cleaner. And when you use tank cleaner, fill the tank and charge the booms and let it sit overnight in your sprayer. Number two, try to never let herbicides sit in your sprayer overnight in the first place. Now you don't have to get direct injection, but that would of course be another solution as well. So just be cautious and realistic. If you have to leave a product in the tank overnight, you may have some issues. So from here on out, get serious about cleaning out your spray tank, even the pores. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Micronutrients are not optional for plants, they are essential. TJ Micromix is a profit-proven management tool that ensures the availability of essential secondary and micronutrients. Formulated as a dry granule or liquid, TJ Micromix is plant available, easy to mix and apply. The synergistic fertilizer mix delivers consistent yield response on a variety of crops by complementing an NPK fertilizer program. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your fertilizer dealer and get your TJ Micromix today. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Honey Wagon? Can the sweet talk. Out here we treat manure. And when we talk treats, we don't mean cupcakes. Treating manure with more than manure nutrient manager can reduce solids in your pit or lagoon and ammonia levels in confinement buildings. PU, try N and P. MTM is the first and only nutrient manager proven to reduce nitrogen loss and phosphorus lockup. That's fertilizer loaded with yield potential. Looking for proof? Check the bin. Isn't that sweet? Results you can't ignore. A pit you finally can. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature and it's clear to see why Capello is a head above the rest. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all new s commercial tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self-contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to join us again next time for another Iron Talk, Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, and a whole lot more. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Why are many farmers reducing tillage? Reduced tillage has shown to increase soil's organic matter levels, reduce erosion potential, improve soil structure, and increase microbial activity and soil life. For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.